everyone. I hope you all are having a great day. Um, Isla's with me today. Uh, we're going to tell you the Bible story together. She's going to help me some. And um, so before we get started, let's pray. Okay, let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your love and thank you, God, that you love us and that through you we are made new and all sin is washed away um, through Jesus and that we um, are new creations and we have a relationship with God because Jesus gave his life for us and we thank you so much for all that we have we thank you so much for all that you do and we just pray that you'd be with the boys and girls now as they listen in Jesus name amen so today we're going to be talking about a man named Saul but Saul didn't stay Saul for very long and um, our big our big point today is that Jesus changes our hearts and um, when we as I tell the story Isla's gonna help me act it out and so when I say things like crazy she's gonna act like let me see your crazy Isla or so and you all can do the same thing on the other side you can try to act crazy or if I say mad she's gonna do the mad face and you all can do the same thing okay so um, today we're um, talking about Paul who later became Saul and we see how Paul um, life is changed by Jesus so Paul is a man he's he's a Jew and um, he he is, um, he thinks he's like very smart and he knows everything and he thinks he's very special. Well, after Jesus has gone to heaven, all his followers are going around and they're telling people about what Jesus has done. And this makes Paul crazy mad, crazy mad. And Paul is so mad that he decides that he is going to go after the followers and he is going to arrest and kill them and how do you think the disciples might have felt if they knew that really sad you think they would have felt sad probably right but it didn't stop the disciples they continued to go on and tell about jesus well while paul is on his way to damascus where the disciples are telling about jesus something happens to him and i'm just going to read it little bits and it says meanwhile saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the lord's disciples he went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in damascus so that he found if so that if he found any there who belonged to the way whether men or women he might take them as prisoners to jerusalem as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? What do you think Saul was like, Isla? What do you think he did at nervous. this time? Probably nervous and was like, what is happening, right? Um, Who are you, Lord? Saul said. He called him Lord, didn't he? And, he? and then the Bible says that Jesus speaks to Paul and he says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. So what do you think Paul does? Um, do what, what Jesus told him? Yep, and at this time he wasn't Paul, he was Saul. So he gets up. And he does, he goes, he continues on his way to Damascus. But remember, he, at this time, he is blind. He can't see anything. A light has come upon him and it has caused scales over his eyes in a sense. Like he just, he can't see anything. So he's, he's on his way. And in the meantime, one of Jesus' followers named Ananias is, Jesus comes to him and he speaks to him. Because remember, Jesus is in heaven, but now he's speaking to his disciples and he says, Go and find Saul, the one who is persecuting the Christians. And um, at that time, what do you think Ananias felt when Jesus told him to go find Saul? The mean guy, the guy who was persecuting and killing Christians. Nervous. How about scared? <gasps> what did you think? What does scared look like? Oh my goodness, he was scared. But what do you think Ananias did? 
He went. He went. He went, he went and he obeyed. He kind of did like a robot, Isla. He just did what he was supposed to do. Can you do a robot? Not <laughs> Like, just like, yeah? Do you think he was like, like went right away? Well, he did. And it says, then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So at that time, like we talked about last week, when we talked about the Holy Spirit, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, God does amazing things on us. Well, at that time, Paul, Saul, who becomes Paul, is filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized. And all of a sudden, instead of hating Jesus because he did he didn't like the disciples he didn't like Jesus and he he decides that he's going to follow Jesus and he's going to go tell other people about Jesus and so Jesus so, so at that time guess what Saul becomes a new creation and he is no longer Saul he is who do you think what's his name Isla um Paul Paul he's Paul and the scales come up off of his eyes he is baptized, he loves Jesus, and he gives his life to Jesus. Where'd you go? There you are. And, and um, so there's a verse in the Bible, and it's in 2 Corinthians, and Isla and I are going to read this verse to you. Isla's going to repeat it. We talked about this. And we're going to do what we decided in a princess voice, right? And when I say it, I'm going to say it in my very, very best princess voice, and then Isla's going to say it in her very, very best princess voice. And we want you guys, even if you're boys on the other side, to say it in your very, very best princess voice. But it's in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And we really wish we could hear you tell it in your um, princess voice. But the verse goes, therefore, if, say it, Isla. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ. If anyone is in Christ. Your princess voice is way better than mine. Let's try it again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creation. The old has gone. The old has come. Gone. The new has come. The new has come. Oh, she's such a better princess than me. Well, I hope that you boys and girls tried that and you did it in your princess voice. And that's again in 2 Corinthians 5, 15, or 17. And it says, it says that once you're in Christ, you are new. You've become a new creation. And, it, and we talked about that even last week about when the Holy Spirit comes on us, we have... He gives us power to do things in Jesus. Well, just like Saul didn't like the Christians before, now he loves them and he wants to go get tell more people about Jesus and make more disciples, right? And remember, our big idea is that Jesus changes our heart. We are new creations through Jesus. And when we have Jesus in our heart, we become new. And what does that mean? That means that even our old sin is washed away. And we were talking about this before we started, and Isla and I were talking about sin. And and um, we were talking about, like, some people lie and, and some people cheat. And Isla, and Isla said, well, I don't think I've ever cheated. And some people steal. And Isla said, I don't think I ever stole. And I said, well, but, you know, some people take things that aren't supposed to be theirs. Or maybe they try to win a game and they cheat. And some people lie, and we talked about that even on Easter. Well, all those things are washed away in Jesus. That's why Jesus went to the cross to, for us. He went to the cross to take away our sin, to make us new creations, and to give us a relationship with God, right? So because Jesus makes us new creations, we get that relationship with God. Now, Isla and I are going to do something a little fun now. We're going to tell jokes, and we're going to see if we can make each other laugh. It's kind of like, first we're real serious and we're gonna to try to change into being laughing, but maybe we're just gonna stay the same. But, okay, who's going first, Isla? Uh, you. Okay. Um, why do, oh no, how do I go? Why do, why did, 
Why did, uh, oh no, I don't know. You have to tell the joke. I can't remember. No, you do. Okay. Um, why do um, frogs have um, no friends? Mm. I think I'm going to tell this joke wrong, so you'll be able to, but because he eats everything that bugs him? That's not right, right? I think it's why do frogs have no enemies. You guys, I bet you're laughing at us. Is that funny? <laughs> I think it's funny because I totally am a bad joke teller. Okay, your turn. What's the scariest fruit? What is the scariest fruit? I'm going to try not to laugh. Mm, I don't know. Blueberry. A blueberry. That's a good one. Why did Elsa let the balloon go? Did I say that wrong too? See, I'm a bad joke teller. <laughs> no, it's different. Okay. Why can't you give Elsa a balloon? Why can't you give Elsa a balloon? Because she'll let it go. Oh, you're such a better joke teller. Sorry about our dog, but Isla's a better joke teller, and I bet I made some of you laugh just because I can't tell jokes. I am really, really bad at it. Well, boys and girls, we miss you, we love you, and next time we see you, get your best joke from me, and I'll try to remember my best joke, okay? And talk to you later. Bye!